Okay. And with that, we will begin. Welcome to Sunday Mystery School. Today's Mystery School is going to be relatively short, just an hour long. And it really is an introduction into what will be a series going forward right here on the Josiah Brandt YouTube channel. If you're familiar with my Daily Neville series in any way, shape, or form, maybe you've seen one episode, maybe you've seen them all, uh, this Mystery School series is going to be in a similar style. We are going to start with a framework, with a canvas presented by Neville Goddard, and we're going to build upon it. We're going to do a fresh, deep dive exploration of these sacred Mystery School teachings, and we're going to bring them alive in our lives, in this modern era, sitting here where we are right now in 2024. So hello and welcome, everyone. Happy Easter to you all, Celebrate, celebrating the rising awareness in all of humankind. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me live. Uh, we are live here on YouTube, and I also have a couple of Mastermind members who have joined me in the Zoom room. We'll have the opportunity to hear from them uh, later on in the class. Okay, so we're, I'm going to start just by giving a little bit of an introduction, and then we will uh, formally begin. So let's talk about uh, Mystery School. What is what is Mystery School? So Mystery School is a concept that I have become familiar with to some degree in the past couple of years. Mystery schools generally have a very long tradition, a lineage, if you will, here on earth. And there are several mystery schools that have several traditions associated with them, several lineages, several traditions that go back uh, potentially even thousands of years. Mystery schools in particular are dedicated to the preservation of the teachings of the mysteries. Now, if you understand what the mysteries are, and the mysteries uh, really are an exploration of consciousness, the mysteries are uh, rising consciousness, the questions, that's why they're called mysteries, the questions that can only be answered by turning our awareness within, by going deeper into the hidden realms and taking a look at self. These are the mysteries. These are the questions that no one else can really answer for ourselves. Really, we must turn and go within to answer some of these deeper questions, as Neville would say, about the true, true cause of the phenomena of life, which is our own consciousness. And these secrets about consciousness itself, about awareness rising, have been protected and guarded and passed down in lineages from tradition, through traditions, through these orders for thousands of years, because if you truly understand how precious and sacred the understanding of the cause of the phenomena of life is, you can understand why preserving it and protecting it is absolutely essential to protecting the liberty of humankind, because it is only through the exploration of the mysteries that we can really realize that all true power is found in self. There's no one to change but self, to use Neville's words. There's not any real power outside of us. All, everything is consciousness. Everything is given life through our own awareness. And that is the source of all, all that we perceive. And though this world can be an experience of many veils that would veil this from the true revelation of this understanding, there have been sacred orders over the eons that have preserved this sacred wisdom and have encoded it all around us. It's woven all throughout this story that we're living in our daily reality. There is the There are uh, evidences and artifacts and keys that have been preserved for us. And that is what mystery schools have existed to do. Now, Sunday Mystery School is really a step forward uh, into a new tradition. And when I made the announcement about Sunday Mystery School, I specified it's Sunday Mystery School in the tradition of Neville Goddard, because Neville Goddard really taught in so many ways uh, a similar message, a similar truth, similar wisdom, sacred ancient wisdom, as what some of these ancient mystery schools have taught over the ages. But he taught it in perhaps a, a somewhat unique way. He really, that's one of the things I love about Neville. He really did bring uh, a very specific take on this ancient wisdom. 
And we're going to use that take as the canvas to begin our exploration of the mysteries together in this series. Now, to be clear, exploring the mysteries in the tradition of Neville Goddard is not about Neville Goddard himself. Neville, of course, was a messenger. Neville, of course, was fulfilling his purpose by giving voice to the wisdom of the ages. And while he did, uh, I, I, I consider him to be kind of the Shakespeare of mystics, meaning he brought a very um, beautiful and um, kind of ornate uh, eloquence to these ideas. Uh, this is not about Neville the man. This is about the concepts that Neville orated so beautifully and using that as a canvas to begin to weave our own tapestry of exploration into these deeper sacred mysteries. So let's talk a little bit about what Sunday Mystery School is and a little bit about what it is not. Okay. So as I was preparing uh, for uh, Mystery School, uh, I became very aware that really the ideas that are explored in a mystery school environment are ones traditionally associated with introspection. And what that means is, is that no one can really teach you the mysteries. It's not didactic in that way, meaning that, you know, when you Traditionally, when you go to a traditional school, you are handed a set of concepts and told that this is the way things are, and you are to assimilate this knowledge as it is presented to you. And mystery school does not operate in that way. It is not uh, an external transfer of knowledge in that way. A mystery school is really founded in uh, gnosis, which is uh, this idea of self-knowledge. Mystery school implies that mysteries can only really be revealed through introspection, through going in within and, and listening to that inner voice of knowing. And even listening to that inner voice of knowing can become a skill because many times we have to practice letting go the unteaching, the unlearning of old ideas to make space for the new ideas. So Sunday Mystery School is not about really learning something new on the outside per se. It's about setting a intention and empowering that intention with a ritual, which that ritual part is coming to each mystery school and showing up on a weekly basis to bring your presence, to bring your intention, to bring your, your, your rigor a focus to exploring these ideas and then understanding that through that outward act of showing up and convening in a community such as Sunday Mystery School, we are encouraging the wisdom that can only be revealed through introspection to really come to the surface and become experiential for us in our lives. So what is Mystery School? Mystery School takes that wisdom, which can really only truly be illuminated through introspection and presents a framework and in many ways, an encouragement and in many ways, a language training to help us in our process of introspection, illuminate the truth, which is always true, the truth that is found within. Today is Easter Sunday and traditionally, uh, in the spiritual and religious traditions uh, throughout the ages, Easter Sunday has been associated with a celebration of resurrection. And in mystery school, we understand that that resurrection is the resurrection of awareness, the resurrection of consciousness from the veils, from the dreams of reality where we get you know, so lost in the story of what it is to be human. And then when we find the truth that we really are awareness experiencing ourselves and that consciousness truly is the only reality that we are li really living in a mirror world, reflecting back to us that which we are creating through our state of being. When that awareness begins to awaken and aliven within us, which is a natural process, it's a part of being called. And when that begins to happen, there is a resurrection of awareness that occurs. And that is what the mystics 
celebrate. Here in the Western Hemisphere, and I also am broadcasting to you live from the Northern Hemisphere, we also have this Resurrection Day uh, archetype associated with the birth of springtime. There's astrological alignments that determine when Easter is celebrated. And we understand that that is because as within, so without. And the ancient mystics who founded the traditions of these, you know, celebrating these and, and, and rejoicing in these alignments, these celestial alignments, knew that there's a mirror uh, type relationship happening to the cosmos with what is happening in our awareness here on earth and celebrating that rebirth that comes along with spring as a rebirth of consciousness, as a rebirth of awareness, and as the opportunity to plant and sprout and grow something new and something beautiful. So that's a little bit of an insight into what mystery school is. Let's talk a little bit about what it is not. So mystery school is not, as I stated, a transfer of knowledge. Okay, I am not a teacher in this role. I am simply a vessel to serve as an assistant, to help guide an exploration. As we mentioned, there really is also a language that will be awakened within us through this exploration of mystery school. And that language is something that when we begin to explore the language of some of these deeper realms of awareness, we begin to awaken ourselves within the dream. There's a language that we can speak that will begin to, we begin to build a resonance with it. We begin to build a familiarity with it. A lot of it has to do with metaphor and allegory. And as we start to awaken this language within ourselves, we start to awaken our awareness in new and expanded ways. Okay? So that's that's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. So mystery school, to begin, will start with the foundation laid by Neville Goddard in his original mystery school teachings which was presented in 1948 to a small group of students in San Francisco. When Neville sat down to create his mystery school, he, he really went through this process of what are the key ideas that any mystic needs to really assimilate, comprehend, understand, and give life to within themselves, within their experience, to truly awaken the divine within and begin to give expression to it, to live an empowered and enlightened life. And Neville sitting down and, and looking at this, what can I teach that will really summarize these ideas and really help them come to life? He came up with five key ideas, which became the title of his five lessons of this mystery school event that he hosted. And those five titles, those five lessons, these five key ideas that we will be exploring throughout this series are as follows. Consciousness is the only reality. Consciousness is the only reality. Two, assumptions harden into fact. Two, builds upon one. Because consciousness is the only reality, our assumptions harden into fact. And this is the secret of how to manifest the life you desire to live because your assumptions about the life you're living harden into fact. Three, thinking fourth dimensionally. This is the key. When you understand that consciousness is the only reality and your assumptions will harden into fact, you begin to open up a new dimension of thinking in your awareness. And this is an enlightenment this is an expansion. This is an ignition of potential. And this is also a rising or resurrection of consciousness that occurs as we begin to think fourth dimensionally. Lesson four, no one to change but self. Because the world that we are living in is not outside of us. It's not outside of us. All that we behold, though it appears to be without, it is within it is within, and everything that we witness on the outside is mere shadows 
of the world that is within. And therefore, there is nothing on the outside to be changed. Any change that we wish to effect upon what we're experiencing on the outside must begin with a change on the inside. We are the cause of the phenomena of life that we experience. We are the cause of the reality that we are living in. And as we resurrect our awareness to the level where we can clearly see that, we can begin to change ourselves to align with the states that we desire to give life and expression to. And lesson five, remain faithful to your ideal. Because when you understand that consciousness is the only reality, that your assumptions harden into fact, your consciousness has been awakened to the level of thinking at the fourth dimension, and you realize that there is really, truly no one to change but self, the only thing left to do is to remain faithful to your ideal. And it is that ideal that we have the opportunity to create here at Sunday Mystery School. While this really is, these, these awakenings and expansions really are the product of going within, the product of introspection. You know, the, the card, I, I, when I was preparing Sunday Mystery School to, to create an archetype, for the card, for the for the mystery school, I drew a card from the tarot. And the tarot card that I drew was the hermit. And I thought, how appropriate. Because in so many ways, what we explore in mystery school comes from that introspection, from that going within. And I know so many of you in my community find that when you really hit that straightaway of accelerated personal growth, it really becomes this very solitary individual journey. And we're here to celebrate that solitary individual journey of introspection and expansion together. And that's the magic of Mystery School, that we get to do it together because we can expand our awareness of the language together and then grow in that solitary journey in a way that supports each other and builds community. And that's truly what we're all here to do. At this time, I would like to invite you all to join me in speaking a blessing over this gathering, over all of the people who are connected in this moment to this live stream, over all of those who are watching the recording, those of you who are, have joined me in the Zoom room for the mastermind, I invite you all to join me. I'm going to take a moment here and speak a blessing over ourselves, over our lives, over our communities, and over the world that we live in, understanding that our words have power. I turn now to go within, drawing my senses inward, drawing my awareness inward into the center of my own being. I offer gratitude in this moment for the perfection that is this present moment. In gratitude, we accept that we are and declare that we are wise souls, growing healthy, youthful minds. Thank you that we feel now the presence of life force energy awakening and enlivening our bodies in the physical dimension. Thank you that our relationships are healed now with love compassion, and understanding. Thank you that we have humbly accepted our power and our responsibility to imagine wisely as sovereign co-creators of this beautiful world that we share. Thank you that we are inspired by life-expanding 
consciousness uplifting possibilities that are manifesting in our lives right now. Thank you for each and every ancestor who has walked this path ahead of us. Thank you for the wisdom passed down from the ancients encoded all around us in the spirit of liberate, liberating our hearts and minds. And thank you that together we welcome the inheritance of our bright and beautiful future. And so it is. Okay. We're going to start with an introduction to Neville's first lesson, Consciousness is the Only Reality. The first thing to understand in, in embarking on this journey of Sunday Mystery School is that the purpose of studying the mysteries is to find utility for the mysteries in our everyday lives. That really is the purpose. These ideas are not intended to be for entertainment purposes only. These ideas are intended to be practically applied to enhance and expand our quality of lives. And when properly applied, we find that that is exactly what we do. And that is why Neville begins his course by saying, this is going to be a very practical course. Meaning that while we will begin to delve into this language of metaphor and allegory, and of course, being Neville, a lot of that metaphor and allegory comes from the scriptures in the biblical tradition. There's a lot of language here metaphor and allegory, that is the encoding of sacred wisdom. And some of these ideas can be very mind-expanding in a way where you feel drawn into the ether with your awareness, because when you really start to understand what is being communicated, it can really have this expansive effect. And that's great. And also, the practicality of any spiritual practice can be found in its utility and how we apply it to become those who imagine wisely in our everyday lives, to enhance our embodiment of the divine in the here and now. Neville's final lesson is titled, Remain Faithful to Your Ideal. We're going to work towards that lesson in this exploration. What is your ideal? This is something that anyone who is on this path must define clearly and understand that truth is an expanding illumination. The metaphor that I, I like to use in, in my mind's eye when I think of this quote, truth is an expanding illumination, meaning it's not just something you look at once and that's what it is. Truth is not stagnant or static in that way. Truth, the more you look at truth and view truth, the more it expands. It's expanding illumination. It's like lighting a lamp and then lifting it up in the room. And as you lift it up in a dark room, more and more of that pool of light begins to spread around you and more and more of your surroundings become made visible. That, my friend, is an experience of truth. And the same can also be said about your ideal. Because depending where you are on this path of personal transformation, of resurrecting the awareness, the consciousness within, to begin to fully embody your divinity here in the human form, wherever you are on that path, what your ideal is in your mind's eye will correspond with where you are in the path. And it's important to understand that your ideal may shapeshift over time. But 
If you begin with an ideal that is rooted in possibility, that is rooted in truth and a true desire, we'll talk about what a true desire is also. When you start with that, when that is your, your core thesis from which you're embarking upon this journey, you know that as your ideal expands, it only becomes richer and more beautiful and more practically applicable to the life that you are living in. Neville starts his class by saying, this is going to be a very practical course. And he says, I hope everyone in this class has a very clear picture of what he desires. I am convinced that you can realize your desires by the technique you will receive here in these five lessons. Now, those of you that have joined me here for Sunday Mystery School, you're not foreign to Neville's teachings. Most of you have heard teachings from Neville in the past. And you understand that his core thesis is that imagination creates reality. That's the core premise of all of Neville's teachings. Imagination creates reality. And of course, reality is consciousness and consciousness is the only reality. And so having a very clear picture of what you desire is step one. Why? Because we are going through a creative process. That's what this journey is. In teaching and presenting and facilitating explorations of this sacred knowledge for many years, I've consistently found, and this is true of myself, as well as those who have I have facilitated explorations with in some way, those on my YouTube, those in my classes, consistently I find that people are drawn to exploration of the mysteries through desire because we become aware of something that we feel we could give expression to. And then we look around in the world around us and we say, I don't necessarily see evidence of my desire right now. How do I create in the world around me a reflection of this desire? How do I experience or create or manifest my desire? And that starts by having a very clear picture of what you want. Now, we teach in this mystery school that a true desire is defined by a set of values. In fact, if we're going to start at the very, very beginning, I would say that before you can really, truly identify a desire as a true desire, you must define within yourself, what do you value? What do you value? What are the values that define your life? Because we're standing on a path that leads to unlimited possibilities, meaning that when you realize who you are, there's no experience that you cannot create. You can literally create any and every experience imaginable you can have. As that individual spark of the divine consciousness, this is your creative power. So you can create literally anything. So when presented with that level of agency over creative power, it makes sense to start at the very beginning. And that very beginning is to get really, really clear on who you will be as an artist, painting on an unlimited palette, from an unlimited palette on an unlimited canvas, which is your reality. Who are you as an artist? What defines you as an artist? What defines you as a creator? This is not something that someone else can tell you, although we can inspire each other to more beautiful declarations of values by sharing them with each other. And so for our first prompt, I invite you all to share in the chat what are a couple, one or two values that you feel define your expression as a creator? What are the things that you value that everything that you will create and express will venerate, will be reflections and expansions and projections of? What are those key values that define you? And as you share some of those, I'm going to read them out here on the live stream.
some values coming in from those of you on the live stream. Freedom. I can manifest anything and everything, and all that I choose to manifest will be in alignment with the value of freedom. This is what we are saying when we choose values to manifest through. Family. I can manifest anything and everything, and all that I choose to manifest will be in alignment and in veneration, in honor of, an expression of the value of family. As we do this, feel the energy of what we are saying here. Tune into the frequency of it. Understand that we're going from this unlimited canvas, this unlimited palette of colors to paint from, and we're beginning to choose cohesive orders to express through, okay? These are, these are little micro expressions that come from that macro massive expression, begin to tune them into a specific harmony. And there's power in that. There's power in blessing and declaring values over all of our creations. Uh, a couple other here in the chat, we have wisdom, equity, practicality, and integrity, love, I am, connection, flow, grace, love, beauty, and peace. Love, peace, and hope. Family and community, versatility, and peace. Truth and love. Self-sovereignty, agency, community, collaboration, non-judgment, unconditional love, expansion, fun, freedom. Satisfaction, compassion, empathy. These are divine qualities. I'm sure you all see that looking at your fellow human beings who are participating in this and seeing that we share so many values with each other, share so many values are like lenses that we put over that projector that contains all colors, all frequencies of light, and we begin to ever so slightly focus that projector into a specific lens, specific lens. And in this case, we're choosing to embody divine qualities. All of these words that I have read out here, all these feelings, all of these ideas, concepts, all these values that we're choosing to stand for have divine qualities. These are things that source itself clearly chooses to value. And we are expressions of that. We're expressions of that. When Neville says, I hope each of you that come to my mystery school have a clear picture of what you want. This is one thing that I've noticed in Neville's work. He consistently says, know what you want, but very rarely does he ever give ideas about what that might be? And I've come to understand that Neville is really, in his teachings, he's respecting the agency of every human being as a creator, whatever, whatever you want. And I, I agree with that, whatever you want, because that is your, that is your uh, autonomy and agency as a mediator from the divine source that we all are to the expression on this physical plane. And also part of why we convene this community is to inspire each other to greater, vaster, more beautiful, more value aligned and oriented expressions of our divine power. And that's why we're sharing these ideas of values with each other. So a value is words to live by. Values are words to live by. Values inform everything that we do. So this is, let's give a very practical example of values because again, the goal of mystery school is practical application. If you're going to investigate the mysteries, if you're going to turn your awareness within an introspection and you're going to ask very deep questions into the silence of your own being, 
the result of those questions should be an expanded awareness. And an expanded awareness will create an expanded life. And that's how we make practicality out of the spiritual exploration. So values are lenses through which we create. And we're going to make this very practical. So we understand that our imagination creates the reality that we experience in everyday life. And when we choose to imagine wisely, what that means is imagining in alignment with our values. In order to imagine in alignment with our values, we must define what our values are. And this is a great exercise because there's been times in my life where I have experienced a circumstance in the mirrors of my world where I understand that to every problem, the answer is imagination. That's always whatever problem appears, the answer can always be accomplished, solved through imagination. The solution lies in an imagine, imaginal act, an imaginal picture, an expanded consciousness, and expanded awareness. Through imagination, I become aware of the solution. So I understand that I can imagine the outcome of a situation, of a circumstance, as I desire it to be. That's my creative power. Okay. So sometimes I'm not real sure immediately what that imaginal picture is that is the solution of my problem. When I have clearly defined values and I can reflect back and start from my values. Okay, so this situation is occurring in my life. I know that I can solve any problem with imagination. That's my creative power in motion. As Neville says, our imagination, learning to imagine wisely will soften or cushion the blows of life because life is blowing winds, right? But we can soften or cushion by knowing how to imagine wisely. And we start by being rooted in our values. And we are rooted in our values when we have clearly defined our values. So in that circumstance where I'm not real sure what that imaginal picture is, I can start by saying, okay, well, what do I value? I value love. I value compassion, integrity, empathy, perfect self-expression. I value health, wealth, freedom. I value my fellow human beings and their creative agency. I value free will to choose how to express my divine power. Okay, start there. That's our foundation stone. And then from there, based on these values, how do I, through an imaginal picture, give expression to these values? Okay, so this is an example of, uh, let's say I have uh, what appears to be a conflict with another in my world. I'm saying one thing and they seem to be disagreeing and it just doesn't, doesn't feel good. There's some sort of energy rift there. How do I heal that energy rift? Okay. One of the ways that I can heal that energy rift is by rerouting in my values and I can, I can look at that other and I can give them the same things in my imagination that I want for myself. And this is that act of raising to the level of love because I have this deep self-love for myself as a creator. Right? And I know what my values are. I know the lenses through which I give expression to my divine power through imagination, through manifestation. And rooted in, in integrity and in alignment with these values, I can then give that to another through an imaginal act. I can see them having what I want for myself. I can give to another. And this is a secret for healing relationships. This is a secret for really healing circumstance, for really healing anything. Because once you understand who you truly are, you understand that all relationships are a relationship with self. Relationship with the greater, deeper, truer, inner aspects of your being being reflected to you on the outside, living in a mirror world. So all relationships that appear to be without are actually relationships with your own creative power within. And so when you understand that, you understand that giving to another is the same as giving to yourself because that other is simply a part of oneself. And these are the mysteries. These are the mysteries. So how do we make this practical? We make this practical by starting with our values and then defining our ideal in alignment with our values. Because as this truth illumination begins to expand, remember truth is an ever-expanding illumination, our ideal 
that which we believe is possible for us to express will also expand. I remember when I first began on my Neville journey, I'd been on a spiritual journey for many, many years, but it was when I found Neville and heard him teach me about wise use of imagination that I really, really started to understand the true essence of my creative power as an agent of source, giving expression in this canvas of physical reality. I really began to understand the truth of that. And as I began to understand the truth of that, I began for really the first time to form a clear ideal of the man that I desired to be, the human that I desired to be, to give expression to. And it was a better version of myself than I had ever seen myself express prior, okay? And yet still, at the beginning of my journey, quite small because it was the best they could do in that moment because I was just discovering my creative power for the first time. I was just discovering it. So I began to cast forth that ideal. What, what would it look like if I really was the best version of myself? If I really had everything that I desired, if I was really expressing all of my gifts, my skills, my talents, my abilities, if I was truly expressing and giving life to that creative power flowing through me, what would my life look like? What would I look like? What would my self-concept be? Who would I be in this world? And it started relatively small. And over the years, as that expanding illumination has expanded, and I'm sure all of you can identify with this, that ideal of who I see myself being in the ideal has also begun to expand. And the values that I started with have also begun to expand. And the possibilities that I have begun to see the expanded horizons of possibilities that I begin to see and identify have also begun to expand. And that's where this gnosis, this self-knowledge, this awakening, this resurrection on Easter Sunday of awareness begins to have practical, life-enhancing results. Because when you begin to see yourself differently, the world begins to see yourself differently because the world is yourself looking at you. Your reality is watching you. Who do you believe that you are? Your reality is reflecting back to you, a reflection of at your core, what you believe your identity is. Right now, most of us believe ourselves to be human beings, source being humans, human beings. And so we are living in a terrestrial world very natural and normal for human beings to have life on. So that's the very beginning layer of the experience that we're all having now together here on this beautiful planet Earth. That's layer one, right? And so then from there, if that's the foundation, we get to create our experience that goes beyond that. We get to say, okay, now as source, which I know that I am, I am that I am being in this moment a human. How am I expressing this? What is that ideal mediated through my values, that which I place value on, which is part of my agency as a creator, a co-creator with source, with all embodiments of source, all forms of source. What am I placing value on? What is defining the creations that I'm bringing into life in this, in this realm? So when Neville says, have a clear idea, understand that the invitation here is to first define your values. Second, define your ideal to the best of your ability. And then understand that as you grow in wisdom and deepen your awareness, that will expand. 
your ideal will grow. It will shift a little bit, but because it's in alignment with your values, it will remain rooted in your values. And so then you can understand that it's just a beautifying and a richening process where your expression grows with each, each time your window or horizon of possibilities expands a little bit, the possibility of who you can be, your identity becomes more beautiful and richer and fuller and vaster in a way, more embodied, more of your source essence embodied and expressed. And that, my friends, is the call to mystery school. That is the call and the promise of mystery school. Because showing up in a form like this to have conversations that matter, to begin to learn, and if you've learned already, perhaps practice expressing the language of reality creation, the language of, dare I say, the quantum realm, the language of personal reality, the language of sovereignty, the language of freedom, the language of personal power, the language of self-expression, and the language of values. That is what this forum is for. And that's what Mystery School is all about. Now, this Sunday Mystery School is an introduction. That's exactly what we've done. We've introduced what these ideas are, and I've, I've laid the foundation by inviting you to get a very clear picture of your ideal. And I think most of us, I feel in this moment, most of us have defined that ideal. And so really, the task, if there is a task, is to really invite clarity. He says, have a clear picture of your desire. Now, I, I remember when I very first started, picture of the desire was the first thing I heard. And then later, I began to hear that clear word, that clear word, clear picture of your desire. I knew when I very first started on this path, in vague essences, like every other human being, I desired to express health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. Those four areas cover all of the houses of life. And I wanted to feel full and embodied in the expression of my creative power in each of those houses of life as mediated through those four areas, health, wealth, love, which encompasses all relationships, and joyful self-expression, which is career, it's right to work, it's art, it's life, it's travel, whatever that expression of that creative power is, create, you know, creating the everything that surrounds me. I wanted to feel full and expressed in that. But I also have come to realize that while those are values to express through, clarity can go further than that. Clarity can go further than just desiring to express fullness. There can become very clear pictures of exactly what you want. So my friends, between now and the next time that we meet for Sunday Mystery School, the invitation is for you to invite within the silence and solitude, that, that inner, inner introspective space, to invite clarity a clarity of purpose, a clarity of what exactly do I desire and ask in humility. And when I say ask, I'm not asking something outside of ourselves. We're asking that pure inner light of beingness inside of ourselves, that pure source. Ask for the true desires. The de so a true desire is one that is not rooted in lack. A true desire is not, I don't have something and therefore I Think that I want it. A true desire is I understand I have everything. This is my universe. I own it. And a true desire is now that I'm in a place of vast and infinite abundance, I can choose what to express. And a true desire comes from fullness, wholeness, oneness, and abundance contrasted by a illusionary desire, which comes from believing you don't have something. Okay. So the invitation is to go within and to ask for that true desire from that place of fullness, wholeness, abundance, and oneness, allness, my personal universe. And I have all of it. What do I desire to experience? 
mediated through time. And we'll talk about time as a lens when we get up to uh, the fourth lesson, thinking fourth dimensionally. Okay, so that is our introduction to Mystery School. And so uh, at this moment, I invite uh, the members who are in my Zoom room, members of the channel, members of, at the mastermind level, if you have any comments or anything um, you would like to mention, or let's have a little bit of discussion here before we wrap up, I'll take a look at your comments. Uh, we have some values from our mastermind members here that I didn't see. I was looking at the YouTube chat. So we have uh, wonder, joy, glory, love, and imagination. We have freedom, integrity, community, love, and experience. And we have Michael raising his hand. Michael. Please go ahead. Well, hey, Josiah, I, I appreciate uh, this introduction into the, into the mystery school. And um, one way I've uh, developed maybe a prompt or a tool to help me uh, live in line with my values and to remind me of who I am is I have on my phone a quote that says, behold, I make all things new. And every time I look at my phone, it allows me to stop, evaluate who I'm being in that moment. And it brings a smile to my face because I know I am the operant power. And in that very second, as an opportunity to turn it all around and to really um, live align with my truest self expression. So uh, just a little tool that, that I've been able to uh, incorporate into my life to be able to add these concepts in a practical manner. Fantastic, Michael. Behold, I make all things new. What a beautiful message here to close out our Sunday Mystery School. What a beautiful reminder of our creative power and the opportunity to pause and ask, who am I being in this moment? To smile at the recognition of our creative power and agency of source and to choose to make things new. Thank you so much to everyone for joining me for this first introduction to Sunday Mystery School. Our next Mystery School, we will begin in earnest with the five lessons and we will go through them week after week after week, starting Sunday, May 5th. Sunday, May 5th, this will be a weekly Sunday Mystery School. And I invite each of you, you have a little bit of time to plan for it, I invite each of you to set a conscious intention to dedicate an hour a week to joining a forum like this, having conversations that matter, inspiring and expanding and encouraging that introspection, but celebrating it in a community. The introspection that leads to the light and celebrating it in a community. Thank you again. Happy Easter to all of you. And as always, my friends, imagine wisely. And we will be back. I look forward to seeing all of you in our next broadcast of Sunday Mystery School.